Folks, the main purpose of this video is to help buyers decide should you purchase the new M5 with what's available. So I've personally bought some of these machines. The M5 is in its testing phase, AKA I have it for two weeks, I might return it. But I do have a daily driver as a Snapdragon X Elite and I have an M1 Max, which I showcased previously. On top of that, I have an M4 Pro for work. All that to say, if you need help buying i'm just going to give some testing of what uh using it as a daily driver how that works out for you in coding gaming and lm llm basically ai so getting right to it in the lm studio tests testing out open ai's and google's we have the benchmarks here this video now has 100 percent more benchmarks and graphs due to the charts and also people's feedback um, so if you don't know what this is basically there's a couple of ways to get a AI on your computer, basically similar to ChatGPT, but it runs locally. One such is LM Studios and kind of showcasing what it appears on screen. Basically, you just choose a model and load it. Now, for those uh, kind of getting more into the technical stuff with the Mac architecture with a unified memory, um, it kind of helps. Well, on Windows machine, it usually is on VRAMs. Of course, Snapdragon doesn't have a dedicated VRAM. So all of this to say, you know, what you should you buy? So given the price points today, you could buy a M5 Mac. And as you can see here, I got the Asus for $600 open box at Micro Center, 32 gigabytes RAM, Snapdragon X Elite. So these are the kind of configs just so you're aware of what is purchasable in 2025 as of the time of this recording. And I got this in 2024 at about $2,000 and the specs were 64 gigabytes RAM with two terabytes SSD. So with that said, going back to the specs, we could kind of see here um, that obviously, you know, the M5 trades blows uh, M1 Max and M4 Pro are actually similar uh, from my testing at least. And then we kind of see the M4 beats out uh, later in the process. So which one would you get in terms of this take? Uh, obviously I'll give some discussions for each one. I'll say that what I'm showcasing here, the M5 at 16 gigabytes ran, ran surprisingly well, even though the ChatGPT was at 16 gigabytes RAM. Yeah, there are some considerations also to take is that the Snapdragon apparently does not fully utilize the NPU and the M5 with the GPU having neural engine cores also does not yet, or people theorize is not fully accelerated. There are some Reddit threads saying that it might get boosted. So with all that said, just wanted to give a shout out to Oreos for dropping this bomb ass flavor, apple pie a la mode, not sponsored, getting any payment from them at all but i do love apple pie and now they have it in oreo form be sure to check this out at your local groceries and stuff of that nature why am i even saying this in this video because i'm just possibly shouting out to other possible sponsors who showcase me and being like whoa this guy knows how to deliver on oreo so maybe we should maybe sponsor him like a standing desk or maybe even give him some laptops or something like that i don't know i'm just an amateur youtuber and i have a kid so maybe yeah okay anyways back to actually making some stuff okay so let's just take a look at the speedometer test so basically what this is is my graph zone output right but basically in my opinion this is the most accurate way to showcase how the laptop does day to day you can see here that the m5 is actually going real crazy fast i will say that um from my you know from an overall purchasing perspective compared to the m uh like all the things that you could buy so i will say with all the purchasing things that you could buy in my opinion, I have a not also featured here. There is a Legion RTX 4080, which I also bought for $2,000, which was my main game machine. Fans kick up, and I honestly find that the Snapdragon it like doesn't perform. There does perform better in terms of day to day window browsing, internet browsing, you know, Teams, etc. Almost as good at like if not as good as the M1 Max. Now, when it comes to games, you'll see here that the M4 Pro consistently, I did not test. As I mentioned, that's a work computer, so I'm not really comfortable putting crossovers, video games on that computer. And then they're going to come get me and arrest me, and then I'm going to not have a job, and then my kids are going to starve, and I can't buy diapers. Uh, but anyways, all that to say, I didn't showcase before the Snapdragon, so different from the M1 Max video. We can actually see here that the Snapdragon runs at 70 frames per second at similar settings to what the... Uh, M5 test were, which is basically native resolution, almost like 2K, 3K format, and at four settings. Um, and then obviously I showcased before the M5 compared to the M1 Max, where the M5, or here we're showing the M1 Max could get 120 frames per second, which is actually better than the Snapdragon. 
And then the M5, of course, was getting around 100, which is still pretty good for a base chip. And honestly, I think you could all, when the M5 MacBook Air comes out, could probably push these same rates, but a little slower. Um, in terms of Spider-Man, the M1 Max was running uh, kind of better. So one thing to take about all these, if you're not familiar, if you're coming at this video with just a, an idea of, you know, hey, can should I get a Snapdragon, like a Surface laptop versus a, you know, the M5? The graphics card or the drivers really from both Windows supporting it in the Prism translation layer and with Adreno um, could be better, could be better. We're seeing, showcasing here at you know half resolution, kind of trying to get similar resolution to the others, about 30 frames per second, whereas the M5 is you know able to pump 100, same with the M1 Max, which I think is due to the single core being better. Here we can see Marvel Rivals. Uh, like honestly, I was surprised it doesn't even run well. 20 frames per second. This is with resolution down and medium settings. Um, whereas in my previous video, if you want to get more in-depth view of a MacBook to MacBook comparison, um, honestly, the the Snapdragon has a long way. To, I think it's very capable. I just really think it's drivers, uh, drivers, right? Um, but here, the M1 Max was running 90 frames per second, flying around with Ultron. Um, and then the M5 also higher settings, um, you know, medium to high. So as I said earlier, the, the M5 is now trading blows with the M1 Max. Here, uh, Cyberpunk running on Windows 11 ARM. Uh, one thing I'll note is if you watch my Dota videos, dude, I'm, I'm always watching Dota. People are criticizing me or saying that I don't know Dota. Bro, MacBooks can't run Dota. Yeah, I reset my M1 Max. This isn't a Dota video, but I just wanted to showcase a little bit of, you know, kind of my authority bias, AKA M1 Max still lags, but the M5 actually on the native Mac version was running almost smooth. So honestly, yeah, it's more confidence for me when the M5 MacBook Air comes out to purchase the M5 MacBook Air. I was trying to figure out other productive ways of things I actually do to kind of utilize for this video. There's something called Docker, which is what it's like people use to compose. I'm running on Cursor Visual Studio. Basically all of this to say that for a vibe coding app that I'm working on, which is basically a marketing funnel, React Flow. Um, when I compose this with no cache, uh, basically trying to rebuild the Docker image and container, I, that was the benchmarks that you were showcasing here. Actually, if you're seeing what's on screen, you're seeing it's 30 seconds. I actually kind of refactored my code with cursor because it was taking too long. All of this to say, um, yeah, when deciding between, you know, Apple Silicon versus Snapdragon, um, or even x86 with the new lunar lakes I, you know, I don't have those machines but i will say that um you know the snapdragon and windows 11 arm when you're coding if you're trying to make something that's i mean obviously people have it so you should try to make something universal but some of the libraries need to be like they're different than the x86 version whereas i found when doing coding in the apple silicon um, a lot of people are supporting apples and macs so um, there wasn't that much compatibility or slowness um, and obviously I'm using AI cursor to vibe code, so I don't really know everything I'm doing, but I'm trusting that the output's good. All this to say, um, yeah, taking back to like everything I mentioned, LM Studio, coding, gaming, the speedometer test, which is just browsing and in general, like I think that that test is also good for teams and functionality. Um, yeah, M5 is doing really well. And so in my opinion, it's a trade off of like what you could get now versus, you know, waiting in my opinion, you know, I got a steal at six hundred dollars for the Snapdragon X Elite. It plays Dota two well. It's kind of my main driver now. I wish the camera was better. When I saw the M four MacBook Air, I have an M four Pro for work, and now here the M five. I do get on Teams calls a lot, so with that in consideration, the uh, webcam is really good. I just want to showcase here, like I did get this OSB OBS Meet, and honestly, I still think that the M four MacBook Air or the M five. You know, the M4 light up and above still have better cameras Then there is actually the option. Obviously, I use the M1 Max um, sometimes when traveling, but if I do also travel with the Snapdragon, there's a way you could get your iPhone. I have the iPhone Air. Um, yeah, kind of one of those guys, caseless, think different, let's go, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's ways to get continuity camera, um, which helps, you know, the old, if you did get, end up going with the M1 Max, um, I posted or in the last video, you get it for $1,000. So yeah, just really answering the question, I've, sh I've posed the question at the beginning of this uh, video, you know, what should you buy today? I'm just, you know, I wanted to give perspective as like, 
I feel like a lot of reviewers just give benchmarks and then they don't actually like have used the machine. I've had, I've used this Vivo Book S like as a daily driver for months. I've also used the M1 Max for months. Now, obviously I, some of it translates to, I've been using this M5 machine like daily for my team's calls, for work, for every, like literally all the time, even now editing this video and recording this video um, with the four, uh, use a 4K like cam link connected to my Sony A6000. All this to say, all you guys can see I'm like one-shotting ranting, but trying to get better at my communication because obviously this helps at work for my team's calls when I present information. What is my train of thought? What is my flow? Is that I'm just giving you my perspective as someone who actually uses the device you've seen in some of my other videos. My kid is now crawling. I'm just literally watching him crawl while they watches him. Crazy stuff. All this to say, um, I would wait for the M5 MacBook Air. <laughs> Honestly, a lot of people say like, hey, you need the ProMotion XYZ. I actually think that having a lighter machine and maybe the 15 inch will give you, like right now the M4 MacBook Air, you could get a 15 inch for like $12,000. And that comes with 24 gigabytes RAM. I honestly, in my opinion, don't think that the ProMotion, the SD slot, you know, more ports is that is like worth more than just having a bigger screen, almost the same performance. Yeah, there is the fans, the throttling, but in my opinion, doing Docker, uh, you know, the it's, it's for sustained burst loads. And I, I, in my use case, Teams meetings, you know, coding, I'm not compiling all the time and making videos, I'm not rendering all the time. I think Final Cut runs well. So if you are able to get a Snapdragon X Elite, maybe I'll t do some testing depending on what the price range is, probably the new surfaces, but those machines, like typically this would run for like one, like 1,500, which is the same price, but obviously this has 32 gigabytes RAM, but the camera isn't as well. So all these things to consider, um, if you could get the Snapdragon for $600 like I did, I would recommend that because th this machine is crazy good. My like driver, I swap it out sometimes with the M1 Max. Otherwise guys, um, yeah, kid making noise. Hopefully that obviously will get picked up. We'll see how good vi voice isolation is, which is part of the M5 Max thing. Um, yeah, my one talk, one shot take. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Check out the Oreos. Add them to your apple pies. It's getting cold out there. That's why I'm bundled up in this sweater. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give like more of a tech review, real person. Like, I don't know. I feel like most people, they want to see like a robot drone give information, like just go look up Google search tables and benchmarks. Uh, but if you want an actual human who uses it and kind of, I don't know, could give a perspective. Uh, yeah, that's my take. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in the next video. Peace.